Good morning, traders. My name is Christopher Vecchio, currency strategist with Daily FX. Today is Wednesday, May 25th, 2016. These are your FX headlines as we turn the page to North America. And of course, the big focus today is on what's going on in Greece. Greece and the IMF reached agreement on a new loan package. And so we're seeing that uh, basically markets around the world are taking a little bit of a happier tone. So whereas in the past we've been talking about the conditions for U.S. dollar index rally, we're seeing that with the stresses of one of the factors there, S&P 500, is actually leading to more risk taking elsewhere. Uh, and that in turn is cycling into higher Euro, higher Aussie in or among the components of the U.S. dollar index. Uh, S&P 500 is pushing up higher pre-market this morning, another 0.35% here, 2084. Yesterday had a nice rally up from the lows of 2044, so to the high of 2079. Uh, similarly, we're seeing that oil is continuing to build on its gain, so markets right now adopting a more risk on tone overall, thanks to at least on set part by the Greek debt agreement. And so here, looking at German 30 now, clearing out the swing highs that we had from May 10th, it could be that we've established another series of higher highs, higher lows recently, and very well on our way to our next rally up, which would call for price to exceed that 10,485 level that we had previously come into. But right now, here in German 30, just to illustrate this. And now we have another series of higher lows. So as it were, German 30 looks like it's basing a little bit more. Curiously, one thing to keep an eye on during the midst of all this is the yen. Uh, yen is coming off today. Dollar yen is pushing topside 110.25 here, but we're seeing real a lot more movement in Aussie yen, putting in another higher low. Looks like it could be putting a little bit of a triangle or wedge down here. Looking at euro yen, which is in the thrust of a of a triangle or wedge already, and then pound yen working on its inverse head and shoulders right now. This is particularly interesting as if you see a uh, no vote to leave the uh, EU and the UK stays in their current form on June 23rd. Have to think that the collapse in volatility terms, uh, a term structure will ultimately in the short term lead to a higher pound price and, and more risk taking. So higher pound yen wouldn't really be out of the picture if that's the case. Uh, but the big thing that we're watching today, more or less, because we have a Bank of Canada rate decision, will be oil and the Canadian dollar. Uh, U.S. oil right now pushing 49.15, just off of its daily highs, established new yearly highs today, 49.42. As we established on April 12th, we are still looking for a move up towards that 50.91, 51.06 area, the swing high that we had from October 2015, uh, and then the 100% extension of the flag here that we established up against that 200-day moving average. And once that broke, on the 12th of April, that's when we were queued up for looking into this long situation. But right now, again, in context of oil improving, you're seeing dollar CAD here now is stuttering a little bit to the top side. And we have this BOC meeting today. One thing to keep an eye on in this BOC meeting is the tone that the bank takes with respect to the Canadian dollar because it has strengthened through the beginning of May quite considerably. Uh, this is not necessarily a good thing for the Canadian dollar considering that the external factors for the Canadian economy remain rather weak. Uh, case in point, the economy is still going through a little bit of a transition right now to get away from this concentration in the oil sector. So it, it's it's likely that you know they want to see the Canadian dollar stay weaker, um, but it's unlikely that they talk too much about it without implicitly taking on a, a more dovish tone because there are some other things going on that are pretty good for the Canadian economy right now. Inflation is well within the Bank of Canada's target. Uh, you see that U.S. growth for the second quarter, Canada's largest trading partner, and Canadian growth tracks U.S. growth for the most part. Uh, you're seeing that U.S. growth expectations for the second quarter have started to pick up. Atlanta Fed GDP now forecast calling for 2.5% growth. We'll get the next update tomorrow. Uh, as it were, Overall, if we see that these factors, oil continues to rebound, we see that the U.S. economy continues to grow, have to think that the Canadian economy is going to be in a little bit better of a position, and as such, you know, the BOC is probably going to be less dovish going forward. So, you know, they're going to have to walk a very fine line here. I wouldn't expect much of a reaction from dollar CAD today, uh, but if we do and see dollar CAD you know, break one way or the other, we've started to carve out a little bit of a, a range up here. I'd like to see a closing move on the four hour basis through 131.75. Otherwise, watching the uptrend from the lows that we had earlier this month, that could come into play right near that 34 uh, EMA on this 
uh, for our time frame right now. Um, overall, for the U.S. dollar index again today, we're looking at a situation where it's stalling up here, taking a little bit of a breather. Now that risk is taking a more of a leg up rather than just kind of staying neutral. All right, as it were, Aussie dollar finding a little bit of levity today. Same thing for Euro dollar, although coming down off of its its highs from earlier. Pound dollar up to now 146.55, pressing its highs of the days here. And you know what? We were talking about this short-term triangle. Maybe we're starting to see this market break out ahead of time uh, of that vote, with markets becoming increasingly confident in a uh, vote to stay in the EU. Likewise, Euro Pound, as we mentioned earlier, is head and shoulders target looking for a move closer towards 75 before potentially basing again. Seems to be well underway. And as I mentioned earlier, the session want to keep an eye on pound yen now as we are testing this neckline here if we can clear out the former swing high we could be in better shape for a legitimate pound breakout as markets seem to be a little bit more committal to this view that they the eu uh, with the uk will will be won on june 23rd and june 24th this will all be in the past all right 161.55 here right now in pound yen want to keep an eye on this in the short term again uh, bank of canada rate decision today we'll keep an eye on on the canadian dollar EuroCAD right now is starting to take a little bit of a, a breather after retesting a uh, former trend line here. So uh, if we see, again, a Canadian dollar reaction to the top side, look for the euro with it now weakening, coming off of its daily highs to be a little bit more vulnerable. And likewise, the euro itself is more vulnerable now, given the fact that you know we're seeing a situation where net positioning in euro dollar is thinnest in the futures market in about two years. This leaves ample room for markets to push the euro dollar lower, considering that A, you know, Fed rate expectations have just started to come up, which is provoking the pullback. But B, you know, you're looking at ECB expectations, nothing's priced in for this year. So there, there's ample room for some opinion to come into this market, some speculation to drive price lower, particularly if U.S. economic data continues to perk up. We'll look for that and more. Uh, today, we're covering that Bank of Canada rate decision, 945 Eastern, 1345 GMT. Be sure to join me there. Uh, that rate decision is at 10 Eastern. So we'll be uh, starting that a few minutes earlier to go over some trade setups in EuroCAD, PoundCAD, uh, DollarCAD, and CAD Yen. Elsewhere, uh, we'll be keeping an eye on the Euro today as we look for further digestion of this Greece news. All right, that's it for me today. I'll be back later on again with that webinar. Feel free to join me there in the Daily FX Live trading room. You can get in touch with me through the real-time news feed, stock notes, and Twitter at CVECUFX, or you can email me, CVECU at dailyfx.com. If I don't speak to you before, then good luck trading the rest of today.